Hey, what's up, everyone? We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be taking some music quizzes. I found uh, like five off of the internet that they seem like they might be good, but I haven't really looked at them yet. So we'll check it out and we'll see. All right. So let's just get right into it. All right. So the first one is from BuzzFeed. Are you smarter than a music major? Probably not. Then take this intro to music history quiz and find out. Well, I'm not that good great with like music history and music uh, theory so let's see how we do first question how many musical periods are typically studied uh, well I, I know definitely classical music everybody knows that uh, I know I think Renaissance I remember doing a musical report, like a two-page report, I think it was in either high school or college, on uh, Handel. I think that's the Baroque period, I'm not sure. Let's see the options. Six, three, seven, and four. All right, so I mentioned three, and there's a three there, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Uh, so I'll just guess six. Oh, wow, I got it right. Not that I was, you know, trying to get it right. Medieval, Renaissance, Baroque, Classical, Romantic, Modern, 20th and 21st century. Yeah. All right, question number two. Music from the Renaissance period is grouped into two categories, sacred music and acapella, secular, popular, monophonic. Well, if one of them is sacred music and it's religious, then it makes sense that the other one would be secular, non-religious. Yeah, not that bad. Who is this? I don't know. Looks like somebody's grandmother. Uh, actually, I think I would have to say that's Beethoven. W.A. Mozart. Franz Schubert, Ludwig von Beethoven, Ben Franklin. Yep, Beethoven. This is actually pretty easy. Gregorian chant was popular during which musical period? Just from like hearing Gregorian chant, I would have to say it's medieval. It just sounds like kind of like uh, ominous and evil. So I'll go with medieval. Medieval is right. What is this? Well, at first glance, I bet everyone would say it's just a piano. I'm thinking it's like a clavichord. The options are organ, forte piano, harpsichord, and piano. I know it's not an organ. I know it's not a regular piano. Isn't, wouldn't a harpsichord be the thing that's like standing upright and you play it like this? Or is that just a harp? Uh, I'll just guess forte piano. Ooh, first one wrong. It's a harpsichord. All right, next question. Which composer is not from the classical period? Mozart, Herbert Grunemeyer, Joseph Hayden, and J.C. Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, I think I remember from school that Hayden was like a different time period. Let's see. Nope. Herbert Gr Grunemeyer. Grunemeyer is actually a German singer who's very much alive. <laughs> Sorry, Grunemeyer. What is the difference between an opera and an oratorio? Oratorio is sacred, but opera is secular. Only operas have choruses. There is no difference. Oratorio requires staging. Uh, an opera and an oratorio. Oratorio is sacred, but opera is secular. 
I'm not sure. I, I've never really watched operas, so uh, I think I'll just guess. I'll just go with the, the non-obvious and I'll say there's no difference. Nope. Oratorio is classified as sacred, but opera is classified as secular. They're very similar forms of music. Uh, yeah. All right, next question. Not doing too well after those first three questions or whatever. And I guessed on one of those, so. What does monophonic mean? Well, I know mono means one. A basic melody played by two or more people simultaneously. Two or more melodic lines. A main melody accompanied by chords. Musical texture of a single unaccompanied melodic line. Well, common sense would say it has to be musical texture of a single unaccompanied melodic line. And I'm right. Christoph Gluck's O del Mio Dolce Ardor is an example of a opera, cantata, aria, libretto. O del Mio Dolce Ardor. Have no clue. I'll just guess again and say cantata. Nope, an aria. All right. 20th century rock music is influenced by these styles. Jazz, R&B, and country, Gregorian and plainchant. It is not influenced by any styles. Yeah, that's, uh, you could check that one off right there. 20th century rock music is influenced by these styles. Well, I, I would have to say it's R&B and country. Yep, that's it. Which is not an instrument prominently featured in Baroque music. Violin, harp, saxophone, oboe. Well, this one seems easy, but I might be eating my words after I pick saxophone. Nope, got it right. Unfortunately, the saxophone didn't exist during the Baroque period. Is that it? Yeah, I, that's it. So I got seven out of 11 right. Hmm. I passed, but it wasn't great. All right, so let's check out one of the other quizzes. How well do you know Rihanna? This one's from Bino. And obviously not as much as I would like to. Question one, where did Rihanna grow up? Oh, that one's easy. That's Barbados. All right, so I guess they give you the answers after you finish it. When is Rihanna's birthday? I have absolutely no clue. Uh, I'll guess August 8th. Why is her beauty line called Fenty? It's her last name. It's the name of her hometown. It means beauty in another language. It's a word she made up. Uh, I'm gonna guess it means beauty in another language. <clears throat> I know you're probably all screaming at the screen right now, calling me a moron. Complete the lyric. You can stand under my, that's obviously umbrella. What's Rihanna's real first name? Selena, Torrance, Robin, Rihanna. That's Robin. This one's actually kind of easy. True or false, Rihanna is left-handed. This, I have no clue. I'll just say it's true. Question seven. Which event is Rihanna famous for attending in amazing outfits? The Oscars, the Met Gala, the Grammys, the Emmys. Well, I know the Met Gala is known for having outrageous costumes, so I'll just pick that. Who is Rihanna's idol? Madonna, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Tina Turner. I have no clue. If I was gonna guess, I would probably say Madonna because she's more, kind of more, I guess, modern. Than, well, not really. Whitney Houston was in the 90s. Mariah Carey was in the 90s. Tina Turner was a little old school. Uh, anyway, I think I'll still say Madonna. Five out of eight. Still not that great. But 
not that bad. All right, let's go up to the top and see which ones I got right and which ones I got wrong. I got the first one right. She grew up in Barbados. Uh, her birthday's February 20th, not August 8th. Fenty is actually her last name, not beauty in another language. Umbrella, obviously. Her first name, Robin. Yeah. True or false round is left handed. It's false. She's a righty. This way, when she sings, better have my money. She'll not get out of the right hand. Which event is Rihanna famous for attending in amazing outfits? Yep, the Met Gala. An eight of eight. Madonna is her idol. Huh. That was a good guess. All right, so next quiz. The ultimate pop music quiz questions. Think you know everything about pop? Prove it, prove it with these fiendish pop music quiz questions. Question one. Stormzy used to work in an oil refinery. True or false? Stormzy. I have no clue who Stormzy is. Uh, I'll just say true. It seems like it. it's not too far-fetched. How many people are in Little Mix? I Once again, I have no clue who Little Mix is. Am I that old? I mean, I'm only 41. But these two, her and her, aren't they... Aren't they the girls that were in Fifth Harmony? Or am I just not like remembering what they look like too well? All right, so how many people are in Little Mix? Three, four, five, just one. And of course they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people on the screen. Uh, Little Mix, I'll say three. Which of these pop stars has a song called Treat You Better? Okay, well, this is an easy one. It's obviously Shawn Mendes. Plus, they have a picture of him right there, so. Which instruments can Ed Sheeran play? Uh, guitar, xylophone, trumpet, drums, guitar, bass, piano, drums, cello, guitar, drums, trombone, harp, kazoo, just the banjo, badly. <laughs> Uh, I know he plays the guitar, obviously. Uh, he probably plays the bass. I would think it would have to be the second one. Guitar, bass, piano, drums, cello. Cello. Which of these isn't a nickname for Taylor Swift? Tay, Swifty, T-Sweezy, Taylor the Impaler. <clears throat> well, it would seem the last one would be the obvious one. Uh, but I'm going to guess T. Sweezy. Totally random question. I am not answering. Question number six out of ten. Complete this quote from Louis Capaldi. I think if you don't expect anything from the world, you won't get anything back. You'll have a lovely time. You'll learn the guitar really easily. You'll get really popular on Instagram. It's got to be the first one. You won't get anything back. The other ones are just too ridiculous. Question seven. Billie Eilish was born Billie Irish Pirate Pat O'Connell. True or false? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Knowing her is probably true. Yeah, I'm going to say weird, but true. Justin Bieber speaks fluent Latin. True or false? I'm going to say that's completely false. Which of these is not a song by Cardi B? I have no idea. I don't recognize any of these names. I like, oh wait, actually, I think I like it is one of her songs. Um, yeah, have no idea. Bardier, Cardi, birthday Cardi. Uh... I'll say it's birthday party. Are, are Taylor Swift and Katy Perry friends again? I didn't even know they were friends. Good humor. Uh, I guess they were friends and they got a little catty with each other, but I'll, they probably made up. I'll say yes for now. 
seven out of ten. Not bad still, but not, you know, great. All right. Next quiz. This one's from Quizly.co. If you know who sang these songs, you were born before 1990. Well, I was born before 1990, so I better do well on these. Let's play. Who sang the song Do Up That Thing from 1998? That's obviously Lauren Hill. I don't think she was with the Fugees when she did that. Oh, yeah. The song is from Lauren Hill's The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Next. Who sang the song Barbie Girl from 1997? It's not in Vogue. It's not Spice Girls. It's not No Doubt. It's Aqua. Barbie Girl is from Aqua's 1997 album of the same name. What group produced the song Tub Thumping with lyrics about getting knocked down and getting back up again? Not Radiohead, it's not Blur, it's not Oasis, it's definitely Chumbawamba. It's from Chumbawamba's 1997 album Tub, Tub Thumper. I'm definitely a child of the 80s and the 90s. I'll probably get all of these right. What band produced the song Pretty Fly for a White Guy in 1998? Blink 182, Sum 41, Green Day, The Offspring. Well, I don't, I definitely don't think it was Green Day. Definitely wasn't The Offspring, I don't think. As soon as I say, I'll probably get all of them right. I run into one where I'm not sure. Pretty fly for a white guy. It, it's, I'm thinking it's gotta be Blink 182 or Sum 41. I'll just guess. I don't think it it fits with Blink-182, so I'll say Sum 41. Oh, damn. It's the offspring. Mm. The singer of this song likes the way you work it with 1996's No Diggity. Wait. The singer of this song oh, likes the way you work it with 1996's No Diggity. It's not Boys to Men, it's not Bill Biv DeVoe. It's not in sync, it's Black Street. From Black Street's 1996 album, Another Level. What band produced the 1993 hit single Mr. Jones? It's not the Wallflowers, Matchbox 20, Spin Doctors, it's Counting Crows, definitely. 1993 album, August and Everything After. What band produced the song No Rain in 1992? This song's music featured, video featured, a young lady in a bee costume. <clears throat> they actually had this on, there's a show called I Can See Your Voice, and they actually had what was supposed to be the girl from that video on the show dressed in a, in a bee costume. It is definitely Blind Melon. Question number eight out of 15. Woohoo! What band produced the hit single Song 2 in 1997? Hmm. Oasis, Blur, Green Day, The White Stripes. I have no idea. I don't think, maybe I've heard Song 2, but I don't recognize the name. I know that there's a song that has the line, woohoo! Uh, I doubt it's Oasis. I doubt it's Green Day. Probably not the White I'll say Blur. I got it. 1997 self-titled self album. The music video for the song Buddy Holly in 1994 seemed to take place on the set of Happy Days. Which band produced this song? That's an easy one. It's not Beck. It's not Radiohead. It's not R.E.M. It is Weezer. Buddy Holly is from Weezer's 1994 self-titled debut album called The Blue Album. Question 10 out of 15. You likely remember the dance, but do you also remember who produced the song Macarena? Ricky Martin, Spice Girls, Los Del Rio, TLC. It's definitely Los Del Rio. Do you have the time to listen to me whine? 
Who sang 1994 Basket Case? That's an easy one. That is Green Day. Question 12. <clears throat> In 1997, what singer sang My Heart Will Go On? The song would be featured in the hit movie Titanic. Mariah Carey, Sinead O'Connor, Alanis Morissette, or the answer, Celine Dion. <clears throat> what band produced the song Mbop that so many people couldn't get out of their heads in 1997? Backstreet Boys, no doubt. Hanson or Foo Fighters? It was definitely Hanson, and I have no idea what happened to him. Who sang 1997's Getting Jiggy with it in 1997? Obviously. Buster Rhymes, MC Hammer, Will Smith, or LL Cool J? Well, I know Buster Rhymes and LL Cool J probably wouldn't be caught dead singing a song like that. It's more like a like a popish hip hop song. I mean, I, I know it's Will Smith, but MC Hammer, I could probably see him singing a song like that. No longer the Fresh Prince. Will Smith released "Getting Jiggy with It" in 1997. Last question: What band produced 1995's "Wonderwall"? Well, it's not R.E.M., it's not Pearl Jam, it's not Blur, it's Oasis. That was actually probably their best record. Wonderwall is from Oasis's 1995 album, What's the Story, Morning Glory. Oh, wow, they don't even... Oh, no emails, just show me my results. You got 14 out of 15. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually not a moron. I'm a genius. <laughs> I kind of like that voice. I think I'm going to keep it. Is that Selena Gomez? All right, last quiz, and it's still from Quizly.co. Sorry, but if you weren't a 90s kid, you're going to fail this music trivia quiz. I probably will not. This artist had more number one hits in the 1990s than any other artist. What is her name? Okay, this is a tough one. <laughs> right away, I mean, there's a picture of Mariah Carey, so you think it's her. But then... Whitney Houston is another powerhouse that had a lot of hits. Celine Dion. Uh, but I think Mariah Carey has like some kind of record for an amount of hits, doesn't she? I think I'm going to have to guess Mariah Carey. Yep. She had... 14 different songs during the 90s that were on the Billboard charts. Janet Jackson finished with six for second place. Well, I'm surprised with that. I thought it would have been Whitney Houston. Smells Like Teen Spirit was the first single off of Nirvana's hit album of this name. Oh, it was definitely Nevermind because I remember that iconic album cover. Question three. This debut song from the hit group Spice Girls featured the lyric, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. That kind of could be like a double entendre. Uh, <clears throat> this debut song, Mama, Spice Up Your Life, Wannabe, to Become One, it's definitely Wannabe. Spice Girls want to be top of the charts in 1996 as the group's debut single. Four. This Whitney Houston song spent 14 weeks at the top of the charts to close out 1992. 92. If nothing can pass to you, no. I will always love you. You ought to know. No, that's Alanis Morissette. Unless she had a song of the same name, I doubt it. 
all the men that I need. <clears throat> I would think it has to be I Will Always Love You from the Bodyguard soundtrack. Yep. Originally a Dolly Parton song, closed out 1992 with 14 straight weeks at the top of the charts. <clears throat> Question five. The song Come Out and Play by The Offspring was the seventh track on which album? I have no clue. Just like I didn't know that they sang the other song in the other quiz. I've never like kept up with bands like The Offspring. Ignition, Offspring, Smash, Americana. Come out and play. I'm trying to see if I could like match up the name of the song to maybe like the album theme and the title. Come out and play Ignition, Offspring, Smash, Americana. <clears throat> I'm thinking The Offspring was probably their first album because it's self-titled. And Come Out and Play seems like it would fit that. So I'll just say The Offspring. Nope. The Offspring Smash hit was featured on their third studio album, Smash. So much for deductive reasoning. What was the first released single from MC Hammer's hit 1990 album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him? The first released single. Too legit to quit. This is the way we roll. You can't touch this. Pray. It's got to be either you can't touch this or too legit to quit. And I think too legit to quit came out a little bit later. So I'm going to say you can't touch this. Yep. You Can't Touch This was a debut single from, from Hammer's 1990 album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. Green Day followed up the success of 1994's Dookie album with the 1995 album by this name. Kerplunk, American Idiot, Insomniac, Nimrod. Dookie album, 94, 1995. These photos, they're not album covers, so I can't tell like which one came out sooner than the other by their age. Uh, I'll say Insomniac. I was right. Definitely a guess though. Insomniac was released by Green Day in 1995 and featured the hit single, Geek Stink Breath, Lovely. Which of the following bands of the 1990s was not from the Seattle area? Soundgarden, Mudhoney, Nirvana, Alice in Chains. Well, I think Soundgarden and Nirvana were. Uh, Mudhoney, Alice in Chains. I think I would have to go with Alice in Chains. Oh wait, there's more options. You tricked me. Stone Temple Pilots and Pearl Jam, I think they're both from Seattle too. I could be wrong. Uh, but I, I think I would have to go with Alice in Chains. No, it's Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, they were from California. Okay. Question nine. The video for this 1999 single by Blink-182 features members of the band running naked through the streets of Los Angeles. Let's see. And yes, I, I think that's a porn star. Don't ask me how I know that. Definitely don't know anything about that stuff. What's my age again? Adam's song, All the Small Things, Going Away to College. The video. I'm pretty sure that's All the Small Things. No. The video for What's My Age Again was the lead single from 1999's Enema of the State, and the video featured the band running na naked throughout Los Angeles. This R&B vocal group had three of the, the top six hits of the decade, according to Billboard. What is their name? And this is a completely easy one. Anybody who doesn't know this, it's definitely close to them. Voice to Men songs, I'll Make Love to You and End of the Road were two of the top six songs. Were two of the six top songs of the decade, according to Billboard. One Sweet Day featuring Boyz II Men and Mariah Carey spent more weeks at number one on the charts than any other song of the 1990s. Damn. 
Question 11. Dave Navarro joined the Red Hot Chili Peppers on this studio album released in 1995. Mother's Milk, Californication, One Hot Minute, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic. I have no idea. If I had a guess, I would guess one of the two that I I know to be really popular. Uh, Dave Navarro, which one? I'll guess uh, Californication. Nope. One Hot Minute. The Red Hot Chili Peppers follow-up to Blood, Sugar, Sex Magic was One Hot Minute. The album is generally not considered to be one of the better Chili Pepper albums. Well, I don't know what that says about Dave Navarro, but maybe he just had bad luck on that one. The video for this 1995 single by Radiohead featured someone just lying down and other people trying to figure out why he was doing so. 1995 single by Radiohead. Fake Plastic Trees. Creep. Just the Benz. I think, I don't think, was it Creep? I think Creep, the guy is like walking all through the video. Other people trying to figure out why he was doing so. I think I'll go with Just. Yep, that's it. Totally a guess though. The song Just was written about a narcissistic friend of Tom York's. The video was directed by Jamie Thraves. Question 13. What album is R.E.M.'s 1995 single, What's the Frequency, Kenneth, from? See, I was never really a big R.E.M. fan. I didn't really follow them. Automatic for the People, Monster, Out of Time, Murmur. Once again, this is a complete guess. What's the frequency, Kenneth? I'll guess it's Murmur. No. What's the frequency, Kenneth? Was from the 1994 album Monster. The well-received album featured a return to a guitar rock for the group. On which album by Weezer will you find the track Say It Ain't So? The Green Album, Maladroit. The Blue Album, Pinkerton. Say it ain't so. Another guess. Not too familiar with Weezer. Uh, I'll say Maladroit, and I would be wrong. Say it ain't so was off the band's break breakthrough blue album. The album also features the singles Buddy Holly and Undone, the sweater song. Last question. The soundtrack to this 1992 movie is largely considered to be the top selling album of the 1990s. <clears throat> Titanic, Encino Man, The Bodyguard, Pulp Fiction. It's definitely not Encino Man. <laughs> top selling album of the 1990s. I don't think it's Pulp Fiction. I could be wrong, obviously. I think it's between The Bodyguard and Titanic. Uh, I mean, my heart will go on. It was huge, but so was I will always love you. Oh man, I think I'm gonna have to go with Titanic. And I was wrong. Don't ever bet against Whitney Houston. With "I Will Always Love You," performed by Whitney Houston, the Bodyguard soundtrack is one of the top-selling albums of all time. All right, let's see how bad I did. 8 out of 15. Definitely worse than the other one. Eh, a little bit better than a 50. I would still pass, but I'm not going to be getting on any, you know, honor rolls. Alright, so that's it. Those are the quizzes, and I hope you played along. I hope you knew it. Uh, not everything, but most of the questions. I hope you got them right. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you later.